Welcome to the Phantom Boomer Explore Science Fiction. Today, from 1954, we are looking at GOG. GOG is a science fiction murder mystery starring Richard Egan, Constance Dowling, and Herbert Marshall. There will be spoilers ahead. Dr. Hubertus and his staff are conducting cryogenic experiments, which seem to be going well until there appears to be an equipment malfunction. Dr. Shepard has flown in to investigate. After being shown some evidence of sabotage, he's taken on a tour of the facility. There's an investigator already embedded in the facility. She and Shepard are an item. Shepard noticed something that he wants analyzed, so they drop it off with the chemist before they head off on the tour. It's 1954 and we've had a look at cryogenics, and now we're taking a look at solar energy, but not what we think of today as electrical energy, but thermal energy. There's not a lot of Cold War jingoism in this film, but they do come to the conclusion that we need to be first in space. And if we're going to put people in space, we need to study the effects of weightlessness. And our demonstration is cut short by a call from security control. We're tracking something that doesn't show up on radar, but it's showing up on the ultrasonic detector. Looks like the frequencies are reaching dangerous levels. I want you to continue with your tour. So the next stop is Dr. Zeitman's laboratory. Zeitman's a bit prickly, but if you can get him talking about his computer and his robots, he's absolutely cheerful. He'll even arrange a demonstration. Punch tape programming, state of the art. Lightman doesn't believe that people will go into space, just robots. There is a current school of thought that agrees with Zeitman. Zeitman is really careless about securing classified information and does not appreciate getting scolded by both Shepard and Merritt. Back in security control, the mystery plane has shown up again. Siteman designed zigzag corridors on the way to the nuclear pile because radiation travels in a straight line. The plant is portrayed here by Hoover Dam. Dr. Barton says Z has the plant so automated, all he has to do is watch for blinking lights. 
whereupon Shepard says, you mean like that? Gotta go track that contamination. Well, that's it for the chemist. Still not wearing protective gear, Shepard looks for the source of contamination. These people are really flirting with disaster. They're trying to figure out why the chemist was targeted. I know why. You want to know why? We'll hold a watch party. Another call from security control. Van Ness and Barden both have some idea what's going on. It's time to test the new spacesuits. Let's see how they work. An announcement from security control to shut down all experiments immediately. Another equipment malfunction. Well, things have gotten bad enough that they're finally tightening up on their security procedures. From now on, nobody works alone. Dr. Elsevier, where's your wife? She's in our lab, alone. In security control, the sonic detector is screaming off the charts. Shepard finally gets a clue as to what's going on, and Major Howard chases everybody out so he can shut the system down. Shepard manages to force the door open, but unfortunately it's too late for Major Howard. Shepard wants to run his idea past Dr. Z. Dr. Z emerges from Hoover Dam to notice that he's missing a robot. I know what's going on. And while they're discussing... Novak and the remaining robot go online. Dr. Z's assistant attempts to smash Novak, but Gog intercepts him. Z fences with Gog, while Shepard finds out that bullets are no use against a 600-pound steel robot. Z sends him out for a flamethrower. Flamethrower is too late for Dr. Z. Shepard's about to do battle with Gog, but the alarm for the nuclear plant goes off. Shepard tells Van Ness to have our planes backtrack the radio signal and shoot down the mystery plane. Shepard battles Magog and manages to burn it enough that it shuts down.
They are relieved until they see that Gog has broken free of Dr. Z's laboratory. And unfortunately, Shepard's out of gas. But Van S shows up with his flamethrower because, of course, scientists have flamethrowers scattered all over their laboratories. And he has a stuck valve, so batter up! The pounding does some damage, but it's still connected to the enemy plane. But not for long. Uh oh, the radiation badges are red. Hello, David. Well, it's a fine time to be waking up. What happened? You'll be all right. The doctor says it isn't serious, just a little too much radiation. Vaness gets to debrief the secretary. Basically, they were outsmarted by the enemy because enemy agents placed radio receivers inside Novak while it was being constructed in a neutral European country. The plane was sending instructions to Novak. I used to watch these kind of movies on weekend afternoons with my dad. Um, kind of a happy memory for me. Not super political. They never say commies or Russians or Chinese. It's always the enemy. It's strictly a popcorn movie. Ivan Tours made three, including Gog, that all revolved around the Office of Scientific Investigation. I've got the other two, which I'll probably put up. And uh, if people are interested, we'll see. Do a watch party for GOG, maybe have a little live discussion on it, and uh, see how it works out. Well, thanks for watching this thing. Um, hope you got something out of it. I got a lot of work out of it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.